voting without choice. What hope for change in Russia? In the interview, Boris Akunin, Russian writer and opposition activist. Mr. Akunin, Russia has seen weeks of demonstrations against Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. Tens of thousands of people have been taking to the streets. You're one of the best known people taking part. Do you think the end of the Putin era is approaching? Yes, I'm sure that Vladimir Putin's political career is slowly drawing to a close. But in the countryside, Putin is still popular. And he has the best chances of winning the presidential election. It's not easy to judge how good Putin's chances are in the March the 4th presidential election. To do that, the ballot would have to be fair and transparent, but that won't be the case. First of all, the Kremlin has approved all of the candidates. There is absolutely no one among them that we, the protesters, would vote for. It's an artificial situation, because we can either vote for Putin or for candidates who are actually not electable. That's the first issue. The next is how the campaign is being conducted. It's a scandal how Putin can determine what gets shown on television. Every state-owned TV channel is spreading his propaganda. How can anyone make an accurate assessment of how the country is run under these circumstances? The interesting thing is that the protest movement is mainly being led by Russia's new middle class, which in the last 12 years were the winners in the Putin era. What do you think is driving these people onto the streets? I think it's due to a completely natural process of evolution. The development of a middle class has to go through certain stages. At first, the only thing that concerns them is how to achieve a certain standard of living for themselves and for their family. Thankfully, we're now past that stage. Next, they start to get interested in what's happening elsewhere, in their city, in their country. They want a say in politics. The government has become used to deciding what they want to do. But now the powers that be in Russia are being confronted by an unexpected reversal. Were the parliamentary elections last December which ignited the protests more unfair than elections in the past? No. They were conducted in just the same manner. People didn't care before, but now they're going out onto the streets. Putin does not understand what has happened or what has changed. We are now living in another country, another Russia. The middle class has grown. It wants influence and it wants a say in government. Putin says that it's thanks to him that there's any middle class at all. Yes, you hear that view sometimes, that everything that works in Russia is thanks to Putin. Everything that doesn't work well is due to the US Secretary of State or the opposition. But fewer people believe in that. So far, the demonstrations have been allowed to take place and the police have stayed in the background. Do you share concerns that the Kremlin could eventually lose its nerve? There are many people surrounding Putin who are not very intelligent. People like that could do something stupid with the aim of gaining favor with their bosses. It's possible something could happen. But I believe it would only speed up the fall of the government leadership, because it would radicalize the protest movement. It's easy to break up a demonstration of 300 people, but it's impossible when 100,000 people are taking part. I also believe the police have no desire to break up the protests. Some of the officers there are young, and they've been soaking up the atmosphere. The important thing about the protests are not the speeches, but the atmosphere. All of them have been peaceful and good-natured. The people go there to feel the power they have. They feel strong. The people at the top can no longer take that from them. 
Putin ignored the protests at the beginning. Then he said he was ready to engage in dialogue with the opposition. He called them negotiating partners. Would you go to those talks if you were to be invited? I would go, but only under certain conditions. First of all, the talks must be public so that everyone knows what is said. None of us have an interest in secret negotiations that can be used by the Kremlin for propaganda purposes. I'm sure Putin will not meet with representatives of the opposition under those conditions. That's why I never took that offer seriously. It's clear that that meeting will not happen. Vladimir Putin does not understand what is happening in the country. He thinks it's a temporary situation, problems that he can survive by outwitting his opponents. But he can no longer dupe them. His popularity is sinking. He's already lost the capital, Moscow, and he'll never get it back. Putin promised during the campaign to introduce more democracy in Russia in the future and to give Russians more say. How much truth is there in that? When a person in power begins to lose that power because society is seeking change, he only has one option, to place himself at the head of the reform movement. History has shown that. But Putin is always too late. He offers what the opposition wanted two months earlier and what is now too little. He's always trying to catch up. He wants to negotiate with us, but he's in a very weak position. He's not offering enough. Take, for example, the proposed reintroduction of directly elected governors. That's an extremely important issue for the country because people have the most problems with the politicians on their doorsteps. But now it's proposed that the president should be able to choose the candidates first before the vote happens. Can they be independent and fair elections? It's a similar situation with Putin's offer. I don't think that it can be taken seriously. The protest movement's slogan is Russia without Putin, but is there any alternative to Putin? We get that question a lot. We're asked, who if not Putin? While they offer us presidential candidates who are just puppets of the Kremlin. But that's the wrong question. The deciding factor is not who, if not Putin, but what. And the answer is democracy. Give us free elections. Let us see which political opinions are in the majority. And we'll form parties and real politicians with proper programs. There'll be a competition of ideas and we'll elect those whose ideas we like the most. Why should we always have to choose a single person? The times of strong leaders are over in Russia. We need principles and ideas. That's what the people want now. Notice that there are currently no powerful leaders in the opposition movement. The middle class doesn't need them. Middle class people have learned to use their own heads. Even when people like a politician, there are always points on which they agree with him and others on which they disagree. That's the most important thing that's taking place now in Russia. And as a historian, I tell you, it's also the most joyous thing. So are strong leaders even necessary? No, they're not. I'm convinced that Russia will become a parliamentary democracy in the long term. There will be a competition of ideas and parties. And the president will not be as powerful as he is now. If I understand you correctly, you regard the current presidential elections as a farce. They aren't elections as such at all. They never were, because no real opposition candidates were allowed to stand, and because of the way the campaign's been run. I'm a co-founder of the organization The League of Voters. Every day we get complaints from all over the country. You only have to turn on the television. The state-run channels are broadcasting propaganda on behalf of only one candidate. You simply can't call them free and fair elections. 
In the past, we've heard repeatedly, even from Russian politicians, that Russia was not mature enough for a real democracy. Is Russia ready now? At the beginning of the 1990s, after the collapse of communism, Russia wasn't quite there yet. That's why no real democracy was able to develop here. But Russia has changed dramatically within the past 20 years. I get the impression now that democracy has a good chance of success in Russia. We've developed a strong middle class, for whom democracy is something completely natural. They can't be governed using Putin-esque methods anymore. That won't work. I'm convinced that Russia will become a democratic country. But how quickly? That depends on two factors how quickly Putin's system destroys itself. That could happen very fast. And on the other hand, how fast the opposition is able to organize itself. The two processes are running in opposite directions. If they meet, there'll be a big change in Russia. When might that be? That depends on many factors. It sounds paradoxical, but more than anything, it depends on how many mistakes those in power make. And they make lots of mistakes. Mr. Akunin, thank you very much. Thank you.